My oh my, would you look at the time? It's game day. Team keep it clean. It's Ravens Packers time, baby. Well, almost. We got a little while to go. But today, what I wanted to do for this last check-in before the game is bring on one of my boys who I've been rocking with for years, for a very, very long time. Um, He's been supporting, and I've been supporting him for the longest. He's cool people. And we're going to speak to him in a minute. But first... Let me get this out of my system so y'all can know what's going down today. Today is Tyler Huntley's coming out party. Now, he done showed some splashes of explosiveness. He done showed that he ain't afraid to throw that deep ball. He ain't afraid to spread that ball around the field. So today will be his best game yet. And today will be his coming out party. Well, I do think he's going to throw one interception. I'm, I'm sorry, one interception. I'm like, yeah, I know it sucks. But to counter that, I think he throws one, two, three touchdowns. And Aaron Rodgers... I think he throws two touchdowns in this game, but to accompany that, two interceptions. So, I got a crazy confidence about this game. Will I be right? Will I be wrong? Hey, you got to watch the game and see. So, team, keep it clean. Before that game comes on later on today, let's talk to my guy and see how he's feeling about it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, we got a very special guest in the building, my guy KDG, aka Official 414, uh, been rocking with him for a minute, long man. time, I don't even know how long it's been, been years, been a while man, been yeah, a while. Been a while. like four, five, six, seven years, something like that, but anyway, um, he here to talk with us about the Packers, and, and first and foremost, let everybody know who you are, what you do. Uh, about the podcast, YouTube channel, all that good stuff. Well, first and foremost, I got to say, appreciate it, as always, uh, yeah, you know coming me. through over here, especially messing with the Ravens flock and stuff like that. Hopefully, <laughs> the things I say don't convert y'all to Packer fans or anything <laughs> like that. But, hey, man, listen, if y'all want to check me out, uh, Packer fan first, but I also do NFL stuff as well. I do a fade podcast every Wednesday, uh, 7 Eastern. So, if y'all want to come through, it's like a you know barbershop type of atmosphere where we just uh, talk. Yeah. You know, we just we just go back and forth. And we just talk about the games, pick them, predictions, all that good stuff. Uh, so if y'all want to come through, y'all got some time, check us out over there on on, on that channel. So cool, appreciate it. And, and I know there, there's a couple of Raven Flock uh, fans that follow you already, but where yeah. can they find you on Twitter? Well, y'all can definitely find me on Twitter uh, uh, at uh, official four one four. I'm sure engraving have it in the, in the description or in the, in the comments. Right. Uh, so y'all make sure, hey, don't take nothing personal. It may be straight <laughs> shots. I may be sending some strays. It may not be aiming towards you. So, if you, like I said, even the Ravens fans that follow me, it's all good. It's all love, man. Yeah, uh, man. You, know, you already so know what time it is. Exactly. So, um, in this game, why, why do you think the Ravens are going to win? Oh, man, I didn't think of that, honestly. Um, I was too busy thinking about the Packers winning. Um, <laughs> but, honestly, like this game – I would say this. I have no idea what's going to happen. Obviously, I'm rolling with my packs. Y'all know that. I got to roll with my squad. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing that makes me nervous with this team uh, specifically, I don't know if y'all have the same issue. But, like, I remember last year, you know, the Packers was in, you know, a position to to win the you know, the number one seed. And you would have thought going into a, a Week 17 game, they're going to take it seriously. Uh, and we was going against the Detroit Lions, and they had a backup quarterback on the mm -mm. road. Mm -mm which is what I'm assuming that, you know, the Ravens are going to have. I don't know if Lamar is going to play. Uh, but my not. only uh, concern with the Packers going into this game is that hopefully they do not take this game lightly because they don't know who's at quarterback. That is my only concern. Um, and that this game could be more interesting than it has to be on my end, uh, speaking from my uh, perspective. <laughs> uh, also, I heard that you guys had one of the best special team units in the, in the game right now. And if you haven't been paying attention, the Packers have one of the worst special teams in, in the game right now, which made that Bears game, if y'all was watching on Sunday Night Football, yeah. more interesting than it had to be. And so hopefully my boys going to Baltimore. I wish I had that man with me. Y'all know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. I wish I had that man with me, 5-5 five, five out there. Uh, but he, I don't think he's playing, which I know he wanted to play this game. Yeah. And it's unfortunate yeah. he's not going to be out there. It's a Darius Smith. Uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to the game. I'm looking forward to the matchup. Should be a good one. Should mm. be a good one. And yeah, well, it was a Darius Smith that it's like it's it's a bittersweet thing um that he isn't playing because it's it's obviously bitter because it's a Darius Smith and he was a baller for the Ravens. 
Uh, he was on a come up for the Ravens, and a lot of us wanted them to re-sign him. We knew that they weren't going to, um, but we wanted them to re-sign him. Uh, and then we just just seen him do his thing over there ever since with the Packers. It's just been, yeah, it's been tough. And the, the ball out, man. He's home, man. He's home. <laughs> you know, you know, you go out when you go back home. You know? <laughs> the only sweet part is that um, our offensive line, which has been rough uh, mm. all year long, um, that they won't get taken advantage of by him at least. Hopefully, they don't get taken advantage of by anybody, but he won't be there to take advantage of them. But I'm sure he'll be in the building, maybe be on the sideline or something. We'll see. Now, um, somebody else who's been practicing for the past uh, two weeks. I don't really anticipate him playing, but hey, you never know. If somehow, if, if Matt LaFleur says, you know what, he's ready, then maybe he's ready. We'll see. But Jaya Alexander, mm. uh, do you? <laughs> we done had a lot of conversations about him and Marlon Humphrey. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> I don't, you know what's crazy about that? I don't even know where that all started. Like, honestly, like outside of us, I've seen it happen outside of like just my circle. I've seen people talking about Marlon Humphrey. I think there's a gif on Twitter that says Marlon Humphrey better than Jair. And he like, you know, in this Pro Bowl jersey. Y'all look that gif up. Look, look like Marlon Humphrey. I'm sure it'll pop up. With like, it's, it's crazy. Like, I didn't even know how big of a debate that was between those two guys. But everything else cool. Yeah, because I know uh, Jair is nice. He, he's nice. Uh, I, I, like, I like watching him when he did play. Uh, with Marlon Humphrey, the thing about him is that what what made him so special uh last year for sure and just really over the past couple of years this year he kind of had like an up and down year um it wasn't his best year even when when he was playing and obviously he's out for the year now but um i think the thing that made marlin so special was his versatility because he's an outside corner that's his primary position uh but when tavon young our primary slot corner he's had a lot of injuries over the years so that's forced marlin uh, to get kicked back or get kicked inside uh, to slot corner. Mm. So he'll have to hold that down, but he does a good job holding that down. Um, so he'll be able to play inside and outside and, and do a good job playing both. Uh, so that, and and just him, just as a, a playmaker with all them forced fumbles, he was looking like somebody who I'm sure you super familiar with, Peanut Charles Tillman, uh, who used to play for the... <laughs> Yeah. He used to play for the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. uh, so Marlon had that, that fruit punch, that knockout. Um, but he, he'll definitely be missed this game. Hopefully we won't uh, be reminiscing on him too much because that would mean the secondary was having some trouble. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Now, um, Devontae Adams, he comes into this game hot. He comes into this game. He, of course, been doing his thing like he always does. Um, do you think if... If the Ravens take him away, will the other guys be able to step up that much more? I mean, if you been if you noticed, um, I think we just lost Randall Cobb. So it was, you know, Aaron yeah. Rodgers, number Andrew. two target. Uh, but I mean, there's been times in which, you know, uh some teams are trying to take away Devontae, and um, it's just gonna have to force Rodgers to know, you know, go to somebody else, such as Alan Lazard and NVS, uh, to a lesser degree, St. Brown. Um depending on if he if he cleared concussion protocol. Uh, but, and, you know, even if those guys are not going, you got Aaron Jones and A.J. Mm -hmm. Dillon out of the backfield. I mean, my only – like I said, if they were to take out Devontae, which I'm sure, you know, Jim Harbaugh is going to come up with a with a good game plan to try to, you know, take him out the game some way, somehow. Uh, it's just hopefully them other guys is consistent. And that's the only been an issue with those uh, other – the other guys that I mentioned is that, you know, it will be games in which, like, Alan Lazard against the Chicago Bears he had a decent game. Uh, can he build up on that going into this you know, game against the Ravens? Mm. Uh, same thing with NVS. You know, there's been times where he looks like he could be, you know, our, our, our future as, you know, our second best wide receiver. And this games where he disappears. Not to say that that's his fault, because I don't know if Rodgers is just not throwing him the football. But um, if that is the game plan, which I'm sure that I think they go into most games with that game plan, seeing as how teams line up against Devontae, mm -hmm. um, those other guys are just going to have to step up. Will they? I have no idea. I, I can't, and that's and that's the crazy thing. I, I honestly, I have no idea. Uh, but my question to you is, sir. Oh, can y'all stop the run? Because I heard that Calais. How is Calais looking? Because I heard he he was kind of hurt. My guy Hamp was mentioning something about Calais potentially missing this game. I don't know. I haven't checked the injury report. I don't know if he practiced at all. 
Uh, but you know how how y'all looking down there, man? Because if y'all can't stop the run, we'll just do that. We'll just do that. But but you you know what's crazy? Uh, and it's funny I was getting ready to actually how the Packers run game is. Uh -huh. Um, but you know what's crazy is that Ravens, uh, as beat up as their team has been this year, um, just as inconsistent as they've been this year, the one thing that they've been consistently not even good but great at uh, is stopping the run. Oh. And it's crazy that. I, I I didn't even realize it until I started seeing like stats and stuff. But the Ravens they have the number one run defense, the oh, number one man. run defense in the league. Mm. So that has been um their bread and butter ever since '96. Ever since they became a franchise, they they've been the mo has been defense and, and starting with stopping the run. Um, so with that being said, I, I do expect them to get a, a healthy dose. Of both Jones and the, and the thigh master Dylan, yes sir, or quad master whatever it is, but uh, <laughs> I expect them to take care of business, and and they're gonna have to, uh, because we know that yeah, Packers got a nice little run game, but the passing game is what is really is the biggest worry uh for me. Um, how have Packers been? I know I I, I saw it last week in the Bears game, but how have Packers been overall uh with the big plays? Have there been a lot of big plays in the passing game? And how has that been with them? Because Ravens, this year, they've given up a lot of those big plays. Now, recently, they've been slowing down a bit, which is mm -hmm. good. But how have the Packers been overall? Uh, I want to say it's, it's it's been hit or miss. Honestly, um, like the whole big play thing, especially with Rodgers, I think – it's crazy because if you guys give it up a lot, I don't know if we'll take that many shots because what one thing that I've seen fans do is that they do not like it when Rodgers holds on to the ball too long. When he holds on to the ball too long, we're assuming he's looking for a bigger play than mm -hmm. the guy that's underneath. And so it's kind of tricky. I mean, they can hit on him, especially like NBS. Are you saying like you guys get beat over the top a lot? Mm -hmm. Like speed kills you guys? Uh, if that's the case, then I can see them going to NBS this game. Maybe mm -hmm. trying to take some off the top. I think they tried it a couple of times against the Bears. Um, so if if that's a possibility, I can see them doing it. Hopefully, you know, they don't try to fall in love with it too early, too soon, because normally that's when they start to start behind. Uh, one thing that, you know, my Packers have been doing the past few weeks, and I've been tweeting it out, you know, you know, we gotta survive the first quarter Packers because offensively they start off real slow. I think I don't know what the stat is, but I know they've been outscored. It's like it's a crazy number how much they've been outscored in the first quarter. Then after that, that's when they start to get going. Sound like the uh, Ravens. Oh, uh, so we both in the same boat then. So um, it's one of those things where I can see them trying it. I, from a fan, I hope they don't go to it too early. Um, so if that's something that's there, I can see Rogers definitely taking a shot. But uh, hopefully, he doesn't fall in love with that man because that's when our our offense is at our, our best when it's real methodical. They drive it down the field rather than trying to take a home run down the field. So um, that's gotcha. going to be interesting to look for. Yeah, because something that uh, that concerns me in this game is that we have a rookie uh, free safety started. Oh, yeah, a rookie um, back there. Mm -hmm. Brandon Stevens, the third oh, round okay. pick from this year. Uh, okay. But and he and what worries me even more, I know he's been he's been doing good for the position he's been put in. He wasn't expected to start this year, but our uh, starting free safety got hurt. Like, mm -hmm. what's new happened to everybody this year on the Ravens. But um, he used to, a couple years ago in college, he used to play He used to play running back. Then he converted to cornerback. <laughs> and then this year, the Ravens converted him to free safety. Oh, so this man. is his first year in the position. Um, and he's been doing an all right job. He's, um, you could tell he definitely does film study because um, he, he sees stuff and he diagnoses some stuff pretty quickly. Um, as far as roaming the field, that's not really his thing, but again, he was a corner. He wasn't a safety before. Uh, so I, I'm just, I'm, I'm concerned on how they'll put him in position to have success against Aaron Rodgers. We know Aaron Rodgers, obviously a veteran, been around the game for a long time mm -hmm. uh, versus Brandon Stevens. This is his first year in it. Uh, so that's something that does worry me just a little bit. So we'll just have to see how Wink Martindale, Ravens defensive coordinator, uh, does against Aaron Rodgers. Now, how, how has Aaron Rodgers been this year against the Blitz? Because Ravens, they live by, die by that Blitz. They will Blitz you if they down three people. If they got so many people injured, they don't care. They they are still Blitz and they sending it. So how has Aaron Rodgers been against the Blitz this year? I'm going to say this. 
Oh. I'm gonna say this. Your best bet is to get there before. If y'all sitting in extras, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Like I I let's I, now the thing, this is the you might have a slight edge only be, only, only because we don't play y'all that often. Play y'all once every four years or whatever. Mm-hmm. So he might see some looks he's not accustomed to seeing, which they might have a slow start with. Now that you didn't mention that, if they like to send a lot of heat, it might take them a minute to get used to the disguises. It might take them maybe a drive or whatever. Seeing as it's a team that we do not play often. However, I will say you better pick your poison because y'all want to send y'all want to send five and six. I don't know how many y'all send. Um, he will eventually light it up. Hmm. Same thing with the um, went up against the Vikings. They got us a little early. Sending us these these weird looks. Um, if y'all sending a lot of a lot of guys, uh, our all our O line is banged up. We got like a backup center. We just lost our right tackle. Uh, but Dennis Ke- uh, Dennis Kelly, he's been a, a starter for the Titans for years. Um, and so he's a he's a veteran, but he's still new out there for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, got another backup at the left tackle. Uh, you know, rookie guards and stuff like that. So I mean, it may confuse the offensive line. Uh, if, if they're sending a, a lot of a, a lot of stuff like that, maybe the pickups will be a little bit differently. Um, but I'm going to say this: it might get to them early, but as the game goes on, I would be very, very careful sending all that heat. That's all I'm going to say. Mm. Yeah, Dennis Kelly, man, that that is that is a name that is very familiar because I remember uh, late in free agency this year, mm. uh, the Ravens had brought in Dennis Kelly for a visit, and I thought that they were going to end up signing him. But they ended up signing Alejandro Villanueva instead, who used to play for the Steelers, and it has it, it's it's been pretty rough, man. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been pretty. Rough. Y'all know how y'all, rough. y'all wanted to get that ex Steeler in there. That's all it was. Man, that's probably man. what it was, man. <laughs> and it's crazy because honestly, Dennis, he's been our backup. Like I said, Billy Turner went down to a knee injury. Hopefully, it's done crazy. I think I, I know. Uh, Lafleur came out and said that you know he doesn't know. Uh, the extent of his injury doesn't so it doesn't sound like it's too bad, but you know, Kenny, I mean, not Kenny, uh, Kelly came in and filled in just fine. And so hmm. they've been they've been making it work, man. The patchwork offensive line all season, man. Uh, David Bacciari won't be returning this Sunday. I know they, I seen him, I seen a video of him out there, uh, practicing yesterday, but I don't oh, think yeah. he's gonna play this Sunday. Uh, but yeah, man, like we lost Elton Jenkins, we lost our, our, our center, and and uh, and uh. I forgot his name right now, but we lost our center. Uh, oh, the big free agent signing from last year? No. Nah, uh, oh, a different one. It's a rookie from uh, – Oh, no, no, no. Y'all, y'all lost the big free agent last year. Uh, Corey Lindsay, I think that was his name. Yeah, Corey – yeah, he went up going to the Chargers. So we ended up right. drafting an uh, old boy from uh, Ohio State. I can't think of his name right now, which is crazy. Uh, mm. But uh, we lost him. So, I mean, it's been, it's been a lot of uh, patchwork going on with the offensive line. So, I mean, like I said, it, it might get there. Mm. I can see and, it and David Bakhtiari, I'm sure I said his name wrong, but uh, oh, yeah, right. I, I did see that video of him yesterday. It looked like he was coming out like the WWE tunnel or something. <laughs> it opened uh-huh. the door. He like took off his shirt or a belt or something and then ran uh-huh. out there on the practice field. I said, okay, I guess he's back, man. Looked like he was coming out for Royal Rumble or something. No, y'all stay from David Bakhtiari. <laughs> he ain't coming back. To this. I, you know what? I would be shy. I'm not going to rule it out. I got to check the injury report. If it's limited, maybe, but I doubt it. I don't yeah. think he's playing this Sunday. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Now, um, we know in, in sports media, a lot of times, certain agendas, they get pushed, like you love to say. Agendas will be pushed. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Eric Stokes, Rasul Douglas, how that secondary been looking? Man, listen, man, my boy, y'all, y'all know me, man. Oh, uh, if y'all don't know me, I've been pushing the Joe Barry agenda for weeks now. My Packer fans finally got on board. Finally got on board. <laughs> Call him Chef Barry. He's been cooking up something nice. I don't know what he's been doing with it, man, but Rasul Douglas, he was on a practice squad. On a mm. practice squad. Just making plays. Just pick six here, pick six there. Uh, almost had another, like, the guy has been like Mr. We call him Mr. Pick Six now. So hopefully your boy don't test him. <laughs> Not test him. But it might be hard because Jair out there. It's like, oh man. Like, let's I'm uh Stokes has been solid, man. He's been consistent. Uh honestly, he's been really quiet. And that's that's a good thing. I haven't heard mm-hmm. from him um uh, for like a couple of weeks now. And so uh Stokes has been balling out. Uh Rizul Douglas has been a, a positive signing as well. 
not to mention, you know, Adrian Amos. Uh, Amos, he's he's from Baltimore, so this is right. a home game from him. Mm-hmm. He's looking forward to it. Uh, Darnell Savage, like the whole secondary has been solid. Mm-hmm. One of the, I, I trust the secondary, if anything, um, going into any game. And if they can, like I said, possibly bring back Jair, which I like, even if they were to bring him back, I'm sure he'd be on the snap count. I don't think he's going to be out there like that. Uh, but like those, especially Stokes and, you know, and Razula Douglas, man, those dudes have been balling out. They've been balling out. And so uh, if they can continue to, to do that, hey, I, I'm going to feel sorry for all. Listen, I don't want you guys arguing with each other <laughs> when it comes down to what's going on. You know, I don't want y'all getting mad at, uh, what's his name, Huntley? Yeah, don't Tyler Huntley. Him. Don't get mad at him if you don't. <laughs> y'all take it easy on Huntley. You know, I I um in this game, and, and I mean he's shown it every time he's played. He's gonna take his shots. Mm-hmm. He he will take his shots. Okay. Um, and and I, I do like that he will give people opportunities to make plays. Uh so he, especially him being the backup quarterback, not that he doesn't have anything to lose, because Ravens obviously their, their their season is on the line with these next uh four games. Um, whether it be the number one seed in the AFC North, which they are right now. Well, not with well, the number one team in the AFC North uh, or the number one seed that they could possibly be fighting for uh, in the AFC. And now for that to happen, everything would have to go right for the Ravens and a lot would have to go wrong. Well, not too much because Patriots are number one right now and they're only like one game ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But Tyler Huntley, he's played very loose. Um, now, mm, mm, mm. Whew, this is going to be a, a game. Coaching. Coaching, coaching, coaching. Mm. How has, I know you just talked about your defensive coordinator, that you didn't got a lot of Packers fans on the hype train for him. But how has coaching been overall uh, for the Packers? I mean, obviously, they're the number one seed in the NFC right now. So it can't be too bad. But how has it been? I mean, overall, I mean, uh, you know, Matt LaFleur, you know, he's came in and, you know, he's pretty much turned the season, no, turned the franchise around compared from the, the McCarthy days. You know, I try to <laughs> – Tell folks, hey, you know, you got any tape out there from Devontae or anything Packer related with McCarthy ball? Throw the tape out. Just throw it out, man. It's, it's irrelevant. Um, <laughs> only thing, the only issue I would have with the coaching, like I said, which is I've been stating for for weeks now. I don't know if it's the coaching or if it's or if it's the players, uh, because honestly, like I said, special teams for us has been terrible. Um, hmm. And it's not like you know they've been good at it before. They they've been bad at it in, in the past. So it's hard for me to really blame the special teams coaching for all the issues that they have, you know, with Mason Crosby Mm -hmm. kicks and, uh, you know, guys not knowing how to field the ball. And, you know, this is, it's it's so many issues with that. I I think that's probably like our weakest link when it comes down to coaching. I think offensively um, they coach pretty well offensively, defensively. I think, you know, it's probably the best coach unit on the team as of right now. But um, like I said, special teams is just terrible, dog. Like special Mm -hmm. teams is, is an issue right now. And so, um, you know, hopefully it, you know, our, the game doesn't come down to it or, you know, any type of missed kicks or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, it's definitely something wrong with that unit. <laughs> uh, it's definitely something wrong with that unit. I, I don't know what it is, man. Like I honestly, I don't know. So mm. that would be my only issue with, with, with our coaching on our end. What about, what about you? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, it's been a really interesting season. Um, of course, I'm, I'm sure you you caught wind of all the, the two point talk, the two point conversion attempt talk over the past couple of weeks. Uh huh. I see um, your reaction. Oh yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Uh, but <laughs> it's, it's been it's been other stuff too, mm-hmm. where I mean some stuff we agree with, some stuff we don't. Um, and I mean it's just it's, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Been some good, been some bad, and been some in between. Um, but I, that would be the perfect def- description of it. It's been a lot. I see you um, change your profile picture, man. What happened to your boy Brad? <laughs> GR, man, what happened to him? Had had to let it go, man. <laughs> they wrote, I, I, I was I was rocking with my guy early on, but I, I I had had to let it go. After that Dolphins game, yeah, that 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 was it for me. That was it. So and you know what's crazy about that is that we don't blitz like that. So I will be shocked if they go in there trying to cover zero y'all all game because we normally like we rarely send blitzes like honestly we we try to get there with our four we try to Rashad Gary he's been balling out this year Preston Smith he's been trying to get back there Kenny Clark I think Kenny Clark and Gary are like top four impressors as a duo in, in the league and so uh hmm. 
we rarely send blitzes. So um, it's one of those cases in which, you know, GR might not have to worry about us sending too much, you know, in comparison with, to what y'all been seeing the, the past few weeks, especially after that after that Dolphins game, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, speaking of sending the blitz, speaking of playing in the middle of the field, I remember a lot of times throughout the season, early on in the season, and even to the midpoint of the season, a lot of accounts would tweet, oh, these are the top 10 players at any given position. And a lot of times uh, they would tweet things like, who's the best at this position? Who's the best at that position? And one of those guys whose name came up a lot uh, when it came to linebackers was Bobby Wagner. But... <laughs> 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 but you certainly have disagreed with him being the number one linebacker. Now I know you guys got a guy. Uh I know I'm gonna slander his name, Devondre Campbell. Oh, you good? Oh, that's good. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. How has he been? No, Devondre's been honestly that he's been the piece that we've been missing from the inside linebacker position. I think since Packer fans might disagree with me, but I say since uh Blake Martinez. I know a lot of not fans wasn't too high on Blake. Uh, I had no issues with Blake personally. Um, but um, I think the visor, he came in, um, and it's always been a position that they was cheap at. And at the same time, if you look at it, well, I guess now it, it worked out for him. But uh, it's been a position in which they haven't really put any assets at, um, you know, uh, not, not a lot of high draft picks. It's always been a lot of some undrafted guys or, like, a lot of late round draft picks. And you can see that. From the guys that we had out there which is why the, the position has been so terrible for so long uh even blake was like a fifth rounder and so uh deandre coming off of i believe i don't know if we got him off the practice squad or we picked him up out of out of free agency i know it was the, i know it was an off-season move so maybe it was during free agency um but I, I didn't see it coming i'm sure they did not see this production coming it was just one of those moves in which to say hey uh you know let's try to get somebody out there and it ended up working out for the best and so the uh, Devondre Campbell, he's, he's come in, he's bought out. Um, you know, me personally, you know, my agenda is to push it regardless. You know, I have him as one of the best linebackers in the league. But, you know, he has to build some consistency uh, behind it. And as of right now, he's he's been balling out, balling out. Now, a big job for the uh, linebackers is to stop the run. Um, and, of course, that starts up front with the defensive line, too. How have the backers been when it comes to stopping the run? Man, it's outside of 20, 2019 was a bad year. It was definitely a bad year, uh, stopping the run. Um, last year wasn't wasn't too bad, but this year, honestly, they've been. I think this defense is like top ten across the board, stopping the run and, and rushing yards allowed, and passing yards allowed. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's this joke going on. They said, well, since uh, fifty five ain't out there, we we able to stop the run now, which is, <laughs> which is crazy because they say like his angles would be so wide or it'd be so bad that like, no. guys would be able to bounce out, and so. I don't know how much truth there is to that statement, mm. but since my guy ain't been out there, they've been stopping the run <laughs> a lot better than they have in the past. Not to take nothing away from my boy, but um, yeah, this mm. is the year that you know they haven't been ran down on, and they haven't been you know really thrown over the top. Like honestly, the only way like they don't really give up the big play, they'll give up some stuff underneath, and you have to you know come up with a drive to get down the field on these guys. Uh, but like, like I said, stopping the run, they've been pretty consistent. Um, honestly, coming into this game, I don't and I don't know if Huntley plays the same way as Lamar. I know he tries to do his, you know, his little scrambles and stuff like that. My only concern, and I don't know if I told you this before, I told another Ravens fan this before, is that I, I do fear scrambling quarterbacks. Uh, even Justin Fields, I think, had maybe like 60 some yards on the ground last week. And so that is something that they will give up. Um mm. uh, they the running backs may not kill them, but like a scrambling quarterback will get them every now and then. So if he's looking to scramble, the lanes will definitely be there. Um, uh, I guess the only positive is that you know if Lamar is not out there, then that's one less threat that we have to worry about. But Huntley, he does. I've seen him do a uh, couple scrambles as well. Yeah, Huntley right now he's he's scrambling better than Lamar right now. Oh really? Yeah, because uh, Lamar, I've been saying I think Lamar's been hurt all year. Some ah, of just because okay. he has not been looking himself. He's mm. been looking a lot slower than he normally uh, is. Mm. Um, he just he'd been looking off, so we know so, something was is up with him for sure. Even before the injury that he got uh, on Sun last Sunday, mm. um, 
this game, uh, Ravens Packers, it's always a game that uh, we we always look forward to a little bit extra because it is special because it's once every four years and it's going against a good team. Um, cause there's some once every four years games, you're like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. But it's going against a good team. I, I remember four years ago, was that game in Green Bay or was that at MT Bank? I don't remember with, Brunt, with Brett Huntley. Oh, uh, if it was Huntley, it was uh, that was the 2016 season. Well, you you remember where it was at? Not 2016, 2017 season. It uh, was, as for where it was at, where was this game played at? It probably, it won't surprise me if it was played in Green Bay, seeing as we're playing y'all in Baltimore now. Let me see. Cause I, yeah, I don't even remember. I do remember, uh, yeah, 2013. I do remember that game, the Flacco versus Aaron Rodgers. It was in Green Bay. It oh, was it was in Green Bay. Bay. Okay, it's an ugly and game. I, I see. I don't remember this game. And I, I think that game like came down to like a last second intercept. I think it was no, no, it wasn't. No, no, no it was a blog, man. It was, it was, a shutout. Shutout. was a shutout. I do not remember this. No, I'm thinking a different one. Now, 2013, with uh, Aaron Rodgers. With uh, Eddie, Eddie Lacy, yeah, Eddie Lacy. The Ravens had started coming back. Packers had got out to a lead. Ravens started coming back. They needed one last stop, and and y'all converted. And that, yeah, that that brings up some painful memories because <laughs> that season, uh, like we, the previous season, we won a high because we just won a Super Bowl, right? Coming off, one, coming off winning the Super Bowl, feeling all like nice. Okay, let's get it. And five straight years of playoffs, just spoiled, right? Spoiled, mm. nasty. Which I ain't had no problem with, but then that 2013 season where it's, we go eight and eight, and man, that that game was a, that that was a heartbreaker right there. Um, so hopefully we can return the favor to Aaron Rodgers. No, I mean, listen, it sounds like y'all you, you, y'all broke the hearts, you know, four years ago, 23 to zip. I do not remember this game. Oh yeah. It, hmm. it 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 was a oh, well you probably jog, jogged it out of your memory you probably like since Aaron Rodgers ain't playing you know what like, <laughs> I, 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 hey I was watching the game I was we had a thing it was called ride the wave we was riding the wave with Huntley it was up and down it was up and down was, I ain't know where it was going but we was riding the wave what what happened to Aaron Rodgers that year I don't even remember he had a um, collarbone injury against the Vikings oh. Oh. he mm. tried to come back and you know it just didn't work out mm. yeah. yeah them collarbones are rough. Mm-hmm. And all right, well, we'll see uh, how this game goes. It should be a fun one. And for some strange reason, man, I know Aaron Rodgers. I know what he can do. I know what he's capable of. But I, I got a, a strange confidence in the Ravens for this game. Will it mean anything? Hey, we'll see. But Anything I, can happen in this game. It could. I think Aaron Rodgers throws two touchdowns accompanied by two interceptions. And I'm going Tyler Huntley going – uh. Going three and one. Let's get it. Three and one. Okay, okay. Three and one. Three touchdowns, one interception. I respect it. You know what? I I like that because you got your backup and you still riding with your boys. You, you know. Yeah. I'm not gonna doubt my team at all. So I I, I definitely <laughs> respect that. Honestly, uh, like I said, it can go either way. Uh, it can. The Packers understand that. Hey, they have to handle their business mm-hmm. moving forward. They control their own destiny. And so we'll see what they doing. But the Ravens, at the same time, they fighting for their lives as well. And so we right. got both teams fighting for some. Um, prime, well, it's not it's not prime time, but to me, it's prime time. Close everybody's enough. mostly everybody's gonna have it, and so it should be a good game. I'm looking forward. To it. Oh yeah, for sure. Appreciate you coming on, man. Oh yeah, for sure. Anytime. Hey, you two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Well, that's my homie. Shout out to Graven.